I sometimes feel like if some of the women who create content, especially in the IG space, were men, they would be seen as cornballs. Mm. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Say more. Say more. Say more. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just wanna build with you. Black All right. So. We, we, we say kind of flippantly, black people need therapy. Black mm-hmm. people need therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, from your vantage point, from your professional... I need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> from, from your professional experience, from your education, I want you to um, elaborate on what that means, slash, like really paint a picture of how vital what we're talking about... the, the, the therapeutic deficit that we have in our community is and the trauma is and, sure. and if if it continues to go unaddressed like what could potentially be our future as a community therapy is vital for african americans particularly because it allows us to get to know ourselves intimately um so we can find uh parts of our humanity that systemically gets robbed from us. Um, It allows us to come to grips with some very traumatic experiences and begins to develop the language around those experiences. So we call that conceptualizing or contextualizing the experience. Um, You begin to understand, when you begin to understand, you can move about the world differently. The things that once triggered you or upset you in the same manner don't necessarily uh, upset you. And if they if certain things do upset you, you have tools, you have uh, ways to regulate your emotions in a way that um, you wouldn't have regular access to. And so it's it's a method of I'll tell you like this for the brothers, and brothers and sisters who are familiar with um, martial arts, um, typically people take martial arts as a means to discipline their mind and, and, and their body as well, and for them to, to coincide as one. And so if you look at, if you look at mental health in that, in that aspect, it is a means to discipline your mind so your actions can follow. And, and, that's, and that is why it is so vital. It is so vital. You know, we had it, we had it, you know, and through, it, through our, our various different religious factions, whether it's the Nation of Islam, the Five Percenters, the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal, the AME, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've had factions of religious traditions that have given us means of, of mental and spiritual health. But I think from a practical standpoint, what bridges the gap with mental health is that we provide specific tools and theory behind why you operate the way you operate and those moments where you find yourself at odds in how to how to uh, not only get through, but survive it in, in the healthiest manner. And then also being able to identify when it's not it's not um, a situation that's thriving thriving or, or survival work worthy. It's not, at this point, we're not, we not even want to, it's not about survival. It's about us finding ways to thrive. So I would, I would say that's, no, that's so vital. Listen, that's, that's the best uh, uh, definition I've gotten for therapy in a while. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with Joy Dugri or uh, Dugri. Mm-hmm. Du- yes. I, I Post-traumatic slave. Yes. I syndrome. hope I'm not She's- butchering her name because I, I, yeah. I love her and hopefully one day I can interview her. Um, I, would, I would love to meet you as well. My research, my research is, is based is based off of based off her. Uh, oh, so this is a fantastic question. It's loosely based. Yeah. Draw a direct line for me as best you can between um, trauma, the original trauma, mm-hmm. colonialism, mm-hmm. Uh, chattel slavery. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. post-industrial reconstruction, Mm -hmm. um, antebellum, everything, Mm -hmm. and draw a line to how that leads to us today and our dysfunction. Because I think a lot of times, like we talk about critical race theory, history isn't being taught properly. So we can't even properly contextualize 
a lot of the traumas that inform us and even the ways we think about ourselves, we think about men, we think about uh, black women. Um, so help me connect what happened 400 years ago sure. and has happened since then to our dysfunction today. I'll make it real quick. So before I, before I give this question, do I have permission to use an example you gave earlier as a means to? So earlier you gave the example of uh, the term uh, attack, aggressive attack dog that, mm -hmm. that occasionally fucks you and has a lot of money. Yeah. If you break down that description of that description of that you gave to black men, all that can be traced to what we experienced in the um, in in the enslavement period and then afterwards. If you look, at, all those were tropes, basically. Um, so like aggressive attack, uh, attack, attack dog that occasionally fucks is a, potentially Mandingo in the book. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, those two characteristics is rooted in those ideas that was that was garnered and developed in 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 the anthem de la south and in slavery and and eventually came characteristics that became automatically associated with black men um that not only permeated in the larger society but also in in our society directly uh, the money piece comes from you know it being a capitalistic society and it being a society that is exploit exploitative and so even the reference that you gave as far as that has money is exploitive. So you see how that 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 mere example that you gave was connected to 400 years of oppression. So I, I, to answer your question, I, I would that's 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 one example, one small example. Um, um, it has so many examples. It's talk, so many. Talk, it's, it's talk, so many. Talk, talk, like, talk about the women for a second, because um, you know I've, I've talked about like the the Mamie, the Jezebel, the, the sure, uh, sure, the Sapphire, like it's so. Like, yeah. We are going through what some would argue a sexual renaissance for Black women. Um, Black women are being allowed to express their sexual desires and showcase themselves in an unapologetic way um, in various different spaces, not just hip hop, uh, which is very positive. The drawback of it is that we're still doing it in a space that racism still exists. And so the gaze is not all affirming. You know, it's not like it's not like we're we're in a space where um, it's the Caribbean and it's carnival. It's carnival. Our, our, our bodies are not completely ours to conceptualize. And so particularly when you look at black women for that matter, I mean, sisters, it's not by accident, all the other women now are, are, are going under the knife to look at you, look like you, you know? And hell, even, even sisters are going under the knife to look like the, the abstruse version of ourselves. Now, granted, I, you know, I'm a child. I, I was born in the 80s. I grew up in the 90s, you know, and I'm from Texas. Let, let me be clear on that. And um, I remember noticing the, sh the different shapes of black women from a society standpoint, but then also growing up in Texas. Now, it's no secret if you're from the South and you're from where I'm from, you know that, you know, black women are holding down there. You know, they thick, you know. <laughs> And with that being said, you know, it was in surplus, but every system wasn't built like that. And so at that time, going under the knife wasn't something that was popularized in our culture yet. That was really something that was done in the Euro European culture. Um, but over a period of time, you know, when we got a hold of it, you know, it's like, well, shit, we're going we gonna to make this Coke bottle frame some serious. And so now everybody, I, I even wrote, wrote it as a thought of the day. It's like, yo, black blackness has now been reduced it's been reduced from a, a true identity to, and now it's accessorized. Mm. And that's because we gave them the algorithm. Back in the 90s, we, we and, and I'm, I, I remember your topic as far as you referencing, particularly with black women. But back in the day, like in the 90s, there was a phrase that used to be said, it's a black thing you wouldn't understand. Not everybody understands us. You know, we, we gave them the recipe through, through social media. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got access to it. I, I, you know, we gave the game up. Remember, the game was to be sold, not to be told. Well, 
we telling them we not even always selling. So, you know, I get it. I, it's not completely our fault, but you know, it's the it's it's the collateral damage of it. And um, again, to, with with sisters, their bodies are still being commodified um, in a particular way. Now, what's different now is that they're able to do it on their ter- on their own terms, more like through OnlyFans. And which, again, from a from a from a from a social scientist standpoint, I can appreciate their agency and 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 their ability to to leverage leverage their bodies, you know, for their own means, you know, through sex work. I can respect that. But then on the other end, I recognize that the community it still has some fallout effects. And so I struggle with this. I, I have a dilemma. I, I, you know, I remember I was conflicted. <laughs> I, I, I struggle with it. You know, I on one end, I want sisters to have unapologetic agency, but I would love for us to have it in spaces where they won't be demonized for it. And we can truly be accepting of all our of all ourselves. We're not there yet. You know, and I think to be quite honest, as long as we're in America, we never real, really will quite have it because of the structure of the of the society as a whole. But that's another. So, so there another. there was a there was a comedian. His name is Andrew Schultz. He uh, he oh, said the brilliant yeah, idiots. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said yeah. that. Uh, shout out to him, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He but does he good said, work. Yeah, he said that uh, you know a lot of girls who are posting pictures of themselves on social media, whether they're OnlyFans, Instagram, whatever. They say, oh, it's artistic expression. <laughs> As if it gives it a step above literally sexual exploitation. And then he made the point, well, when you think about art, art is a thing that's sold. That's literally what art is. It's it a is. thing that it is an, a, a commodity. It is. Right? So wh- why do you think there's this disconnect? Or do you think it is a disconnect? There isn't a disconnect and they're just trying to frame it in a way that's more palatable, more politically correct. Or do you think there's a disconnect between showing my body off and how it connects to my generational exploitation? So I, I want to be careful in um, how I answer this. Um, we're going to call this a working answer, okay. if you will. So audience, allow me some grace, if you will. <laughs> Because I, I foresee a future where this will be, this will be malleable. I'm going to say that in some contexts it's both, and it's both based off of the intent, the intent of the person creating the art, but then also the viewer, because that is a relationship. So people who choose to uh, make content that is sexually oriented um, and do call it art. I think some of them are intentionally putting things together to where you can see the artistic value. And and it may come from a a foundation of an aesthetic, um, whether that be uh, scholastically or ratchet. Um, (laughs) There's a spectrum, people. Um, And you can kind of see it. There's a there's a mm, there's an avant garde. To it, um, the best way I could give an example to it is like I'm gonna use a hip hop um, example. If I was to give um, give an example of a, a woman who that's a, a rapper, a, a hip hop artist that is couture couture of what Little Kim and Trina represented. Um, in in the 90s, I would have to give it first to that of a Nicki Minaj, um, somewhat of a Cardi B, and of course the City Girls because they they are direct descendants of of that aesthetic. And so, although obviously they have their own nuances and, and differences, they come from a tradition um, of women who have shown their sexuality as a means of not only liberation of freedom, but also how they operate in the streets too. And so it's, it's, it's both. I'm selling myself and I understand the drawback of that, but I'm also selling myself on my own terms. Um, and while I'm showing you my, showing you myself, I'm going to show you how I want to show myself. Um, I want to add my, my identity, my flair to it. And so it's, it's not a, that's why I said it's, it's, it's both. Um, and, I will say the, the again the intent of both parties matters because if you're attempting to con- convey a message that means there's a way you have to edit it there's a way you're conveying it 
That doesn't necessarily mean that the person viewing it is going to see your point, but it's your job as the artist to be as clear as possible in how you articulate what the message, message you want to convey. And so that's the artist's job. On the flip side, as a, as a viewer, not every viewer is created equal. So what do I mean by that? There are some people that are going to be because of their because of their lived experience, because of their knowledge base, because of their awareness, they're going to see what you're going for. And they're going to see the nuances of of um, how you present, you know, your your body and how in the in the lyrics that are attached to it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then some depending on the content of it, depending on the content, some people will be like. They just showing ass and titties, or they just showing themselves fucking. It it really it really depends, and so we, it depends on the the genre of art. If we're talking OnlyFans, I'm I don't have an OnlyFans, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't have OnlyFans. Um, I don't watch OnlyFans, um, so I I can't necessarily say the spectrum of content that's there. But I would assume that it's some of it. Some of the quality is high, and some of it is low. Um, and I think you can kind of see who's putting in the effort and who's not. But I think that also re- reflects the fan base too, the quality of the, the of the viewer's uh, expectations plays a role in that. Because for some women, I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like some women just create content of they of their bodies because they know at the bare minimum that's gonna sell. It, it gets the likes. And the 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 artistic piece is a is a secondary. Yeah. Afterthought to to, some of them to, be basic. to to polish yeah. some of them to make be, it not yeah. look some of, you know some of them present in the basic yeah you know we're gonna call a spade a spade yeah, yeah. that's why that's why it's like I, I can even speak personally in this like there are there are certain pictures I or yeah there's certain pictures that I have scrolled past and not liked not because the woman wasn't beautiful but to me she wasn't to me it just seemed. It seems forced. Mm. I, it seems it 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 seems it seems forced, and it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I sometimes feel like. Bear with me, folks. I I um I sometimes feel like, if some of the women who create content, especially in the IG space, were men, they would be seen as cornballs. Mm. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a book. Say more, say more, say more. It 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 just gives it it just gives not trying to to give some type of some type of creativity. There's no creativity. I don't mind you showing your ass and titties, but be creative, you know? Um show show. Show some effort and thought, you know, but again, that's also on the, that's also as the person that's viewing is responsible to evoke that because, hell, we stop liking the shit. You ain't going to, you're going to think different. You're going to, you know, you're going to run a different plan. So, so, so to to your point, why is it that we give as a society, we give women more latitude in that? Because like, like you said, right? Because we don't value ourselves. Men, men have not been socialized to value their, 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 um, their gaze, their um, emotions that come with their gaze, their, um, just their sense of value is not valued in the same context. And so. So do you think we're kind of predisposed to look for reasons to disqualify men and look for reasons to qualify women? Um, it depends. It depends. I I I don't want to go that far and say that necessarily. I think it, it's circumstantial. I think in reference to because I see it with men too. It's like I see the men who are content creators and like they you know whether they be fashion oriented or they're fitness oriented. Like brother, with all due respect, <laughs> if he sees it, he be like he talking about me. It's one brother that um he's a fantastic athlete and I'm sure he's a dope ass trainer and he. I, and he's creative, but like he's doing these really, he's doing these really elaborate exercises with different equipment and to show his athleticism. 
And although, I mean, it, honestly, he's doing like Guinness World Book worthy type type of things. And although, <laughs> although it's 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 eye catching and it is creative. What's interesting about it is like it's very over the top. It's like if he wasn't a premier athlete, it would be on the 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 fallout of him like actually getting hurt would be on a jackass level. Mm. <laughs> like he's doing some really dangerous shit, and it it, it shows us how how elite of an athlete he is. But then it's also kind of like, but how relatable is this too? It's like, you a dope ass athlete and I'm sure you're a dope trainer. You know, you can do all these things, but like for somebody who may want to train with you, you know, how, how are they going to be able to, to see themselves mm -hmm. in you? Um, and, I, and I think there has to be, it, and on the flip side, I think we have to create and this is just only my thoughts, but I think we have to create content that has a level of relatability and, and along with the creativity, along with, you know, a little fantasy along, you know, it has, you, you, you got to put some thought in it, some, some thought, you know, he has much thought and I'm not saying he doesn't, but like, if we're talking about why the, why you, you asked the question around, like, why do we give up, give so freely to them, I, you know, before OnlyFans, before social media, you know, we were socialized to to look at women, you know, in a gawking manner, you know, and I, and I know some of it is biological, you know, speaking speaking as a social scientist, I know some of it is biological, but then also it was hypersexualizing young men to to act continue to act that way more so. So it's like I get to act on this in the privacy of my own home, you know, you, it's a perfect storm. And so it's like, you know, that's why sisters will say, you know, you, you know, we'll fuck anything. OK, well, that like is a reflection of I'll fuck anything. Mm. So uh, I don't know if you've seen the um, the documentary, The Social Dilemma. I've heard of it. I still haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, yeah, yeah. it talks about kind of the fallout of the social media generation. So sure. from your perspective, from your expertise. Explain social media. And what it's doing slash has done or will do to us if we continue to consume it blindly. Especially, and when I say us specifically, black folks, yes, sir, is giving us is giving us is giving us new possibilities in how we can connect to the world, but also it's given us um, the dark side of it is it's given us a false representation of what the world is or 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 also can be if it, it, it goes both ways so break, what i mean that by down, that yeah um growing up in the midwest or in the south 40 50 years ago unless you had the means you were only and even before that you were only connected to the immediate community that you grew up in and, you know, maybe if you had relatives outside of that space and you went and visited them, you know, the circle net, the network of people, unless you were doing unless you were in some type of business where you were forced to travel, your reach to connect to people was very limited. Social media has given us the opportunity to reach far beyond that scope and, and above. Like, for example, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate today to have this interview with you based off of what social media. You didn't know me from Tom, Dick, or Harry, you know what I'm saying? But as brothers, we were able to connect and, and by, by happenstance, you know, by God's intervention, how, there's, no, there's no telling how long it would have took for us to meet without social media. So that's what I'm talking about. The other side of it is that we were talking about er earlier, social media, unfortunately, is very ego driven. Mm -hmm. It's an algorithm. It's a game in which it's driven by how much attention that you can get from other people and the things that are clickbait worthy. And so what, what problem is that is people are trying to do things and trying to position and posture themselves and have moments that are clickbait worthy that get people to watch and follow them. That's the problem. We're, we're not having genuine moments. We're struggling to have genuine moments or we're always concerned about capturing the, the, the genuine moment in the right way. And it ends up being fabricated. Right, right, right. right. But we want real love. Mm. Make it make sense. So where 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 do you see this going? If we don't get a hold of it, if we don't learn how to manage manage um, social media, um, I 
I think our ability to communicate could get worse. Um, I think we're going to, we could potentially, potentially completely objectify and objectify our interactions and make them completely transactional. Um, that's, and again, that's on the extreme end, you know, there's statistics that challenge this, these thoughts that I'm conveying to you right now. And thank God they are. <laughs> um, I think, I think, um, we are stepping into a world where you have to have a digital imprint in order to mean something in this world, to be valuable. I think that's the biggest danger, that privacy and discretion no longer matters. And all things are not meant to be seen or shown for other people to gaze. And so I think in reference to black folks, is that we are losing our ability to discern when it's, when it's appropriate to show ourselves and when it is not. Um, and again, I don't want to come off as like there's a respectability politics, but I think there is something to be said about preserving private moments for yourself and other, and other people. Everything can't, should not be for sale. Everything should not be for sale because that in which you are selling, you are, you are lowering your value. You are lowering your value. That is the problem. We're putting a price on everything. That, I, I think that's really the problem. We're putting a price on everything.